Okay, so again, my name is Bo Lee, and this is the NYC Guitar Group, and the class today is the two best rhythms in the world. You can be an amazing uh, lead player, you can be amazing at bar chords, you can know all your theory, but if you're not a good rhythm player, I don't want to play with you, and a lot of other people won't want to either. It's true. I would prefer any day of the week someone being a good rhythm player over a lead player, because you, you really don't play guitar if, you're not, if you can't play rhythm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, is an, it is a rhythm instrument. And so one of the most important things that you want to learn about rhythm playing uh, is something that I think a lot of, a lot of newbies don't, don't really understand. They try to play rhythm like this. They'll do stuff like this, like... Um, So you see that it's not, there's not this consistent flow, right? A good rhythm player, if you would plug your ears and you would watch them visually, their hand would be consistently moving. And, and the different rhythms would be produced just by hitting at certain points and missing at certain points, okay? So watch this, watch these different rhythms. your ears, you would see this hand constantly moving, wouldn't you? Now I got some variation by different dynamics, right? So sometimes it hit loud, sometimes it hit very soft, and that keeps it interesting. Uh, but then also, I do a lot of palm mutes as well. And by the way, my guitar is totally out of tune, um, which drives me crazy, but that's okay. But you got the idea, right? So, the, so if you're not playing rhythm with keeping your hand flowing, you're doing it wrong. So I've got a couple of, um, couple of rhythms here. If we go to page one and two, go ahead and hold both of those open. And um, so you gotta have the basic eight stroke rhythm down on the left here, it's very simple. And in fact, it might be too simple for some of you guys. But the one on the right is, is just, I think the best rhythm in the world. Let me tune up real quick. Okay, so the eight stroke rhythm has eight arrows. You see that? Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And there are dots underneath some of those arrows. The dotted arrows are the ones I want you to hit. If there's an arrow without a dot, I want you to miss, okay? So this is what this rhythm sounds like. Okay, you probably, you know, there's this Green Day song. Right? It's, it's pretty simple. Down, down, up, up, down, up. And it, again, it might be simple for some people, but let's let's try it real quick. Down, down, up, up, down, up. because um, a lot of songs need a good eight stroke rhythm and this song is gonna be probably the most commonly used song or rhythm in the world, okay? So you can mute your strings and practice this, just barely touch the strings. And you go down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up.
professionalism to it. Um, professional rhythm players are not going to strum all six strings all the time. That just doesn't sound good. All right, so what we can do is, do you have a pen? If you do, take your pen and circle that first dot. Okay, how you doing? Good. What's your name? Tay. Tay, cool. Yeah. Nice to meet you. You got your packet? I do. Cool, but no, no guitar. No guitar. All right, well, you, you'll learn something. It'll be fun. <laughs> cool. It'll be good. You got an extra guitar? I don't, unfortunately. Cool. Yep, I don't. I, I would let you use this, but I actually have to show a lot of visuals. No, no, that's so, fine. So I appreciate it. Yeah, but you'll get, you'll get plenty just watching. Yes, that's no good. problem. Okay, so um, what, we, what, what we do with this by circling that first dot is um, sometimes you want to separate the bass note. I don't like to strum all six strings all the time. Now watch me play this rhythm, right? And I'm going to play a song and, and watch what I do. measure, instead of strumming all, all the notes, I hit that bass note and I let it ring. How you doing? Good to see Okay, I let it ring and the rest of the rhythm, I stop touching that top, top note. Because what I do is I let that thing ring. I go, you hear it sustaining? And that sounds nice. And while I'm doing that, I just go down and I start hitting the bottom three or four strings. So C. Pretty simple rhythm, but yet it sounds really nice, doesn't it? And so what you want to do is you want to hit that bass note, hit it nice and loud, and don't touch it again for the rest of the measure. Because as soon as you touch it, it stops ringing, right? And so it sounds very nice to have that without the buzz, right? Okay, and it's okay, there's nothing wrong. What, what's wrong with me coming down for the rest of the rhythm and just strumming three or four strings? I think it sounds nice, and you know what I do? When I hit that bass note, I pinch hard so that that bass note gets a good, nice, loud pop, right? And then I come down to the bottom and I loosen it up and I let that thing flip flop so it's quieter. And I think that sounds very professional. Let's talk about the different features of making that simple rhythm sound professional. What can we do? One thing at a time. Bass note only on the first uh, note of each measure. Yep. Let it ring. Let it ring. Bong for a whole measure. What else? Loosen the first on the pick and then play the, play the, um, the rest of the strings lightly. Yep. And I wouldn't even say the rest of the strings. I think it would even sound fine if you're just strumming three strings on the bottom. You know, you can do something like this, like. I mean, I, I like this. Hit the bass, like if you're doing an E minor, you're allowed to hit the first string, right? I'll hit the bass note. Did you notice what I did? Bass note, and then what's the second hit on that, on that rhythm? It's a downstroke, right? So my downstroke, I can go like this. And then the rest, I'm hitting the bottom three strings. Such a simple rhythm can sound very nice, can't it? Now, stop and let's think about this. If I hit this as the first hit, what's it doing the rest of the measure? The, mess of the rest of the rhythm, what's it doing? Ring. Just ring. Beautifully, bassy, awesome. <laughs> if I come down and I go like this, 
on my second hit. And then the rest of the time, I'm hitting the bottom three strings. What are these two doing? Beautifully ringing, right? They don't have to ring as loud as my bass note. I want that bass note to be the loudest. But you see like, like how one simple little rhythm can sound so professional. It sounds very nice, even though I'm still out of tune. See? For something like, uh, let's say a song like Country Roads by John Denver, you're going to use that. in there eventually as, as you become a better rhythm player, but that is an, a very, very important rhythm. And actually, let's go to the next rhythm now. This is the 16 stroke rhythm, and this is harder, but it is also very beautiful, and there are some songs where the eight stroke rhythm is not gonna be appropriate. Okay, the 16 stroke rhythm is gonna sound like this. Actually, we'll, we'll play like this. And you'll have to go home and you'll have to practice it for put like two hours into it, okay? And that's okay. But this is a 16 stroke rhythm. Now you know that we count measures. You guys know what a measure is? It's like in a song, it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, some rhythms, like the eight stroke rhythm on the left, that uses what it's called eighth notes. It's like taking a measure and breaking it into eight pieces. So it's like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and but sometimes we want to move our hands faster in a measure so if you move twice as fast as the eight stroke rhythm instead of going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and we have to go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and that's how that's how people count like 16 uh, notes. So the 16 hand motions in one measure, and, uh, and it's weird because do you notice that there are some arrows that have two misses in a row? Yeah. Okay. What you're going to want to do, which you should not do, is you're going to want to hit that first arrow and let your hand go down, and you're going to want to pause down there until the fourth arrow which is when you come up and hit, right? Because you're gonna think to yourself, why keep moving my hand when there's no hits? That's unnecessary, right? The problem is if you, if you pause there, you notice there's another place that you're gonna pause later on in the, in the rhythm as well, right? 
And so your hand's not going to keep flowing. It's going to be like, boom, pause, da -da 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 -da. you know, you're going to keep this pausing and going. And that jerky movement is going to, what it will do over the period of a song is your tempo is going to go a lot faster and then a lot slower. You're not going to have a consistent tempo. Does that make sense? So the whole time you want that hand to be flowing. Notice that my hand's moving even when I'm, you know, during those double misses, right? Down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. By the way, you guys know that you can practice in the subways? I used to do that. Not in the subways. Probably. I used to play the drums for driving too on the, on the steering wheel. Yeah, not in New York City though. I wouldn't do that. Not the one. Yeah. I, uh, they are very strict here in comparison to Chicago and other places they came from. Okay, so you guys see how that works? That's a really nice rhythm, isn't it? So if you find that you're having a hard time getting that flow down, here's what you want to do. You want to cover up the, sec the, the second half of that rhythm. You want to focus and master the first half. Because you're making the first half just a normal eight stroke rhythm, right? Right? Once you feel comfortable with that, then you can, you know, Stop covering up the second half with a sheet of paper, take that away, and just try the whole thing then. Okay, so if you find it difficult, what you're gonna need to do is legitimately, if, if, it, if it takes you two hours, is it worth it to have the best rhythm down in the world? And I'm telling you, it's the best rhythm. It's beautiful, it's the most beautiful rhythm in the world, and two hours of an investment is not that bad. You might have to try and mess up 150 times, but it's fine. I've seen, I've taught hundreds of students since I was age 18. That's when I started teaching lessons. And um, many people will start, and it's very difficult at first, but they get it to that flow. And once you get that flow, I and mean, what an awesome rhythm in your toolbox, right? You can use anytime you want. Okay, um, any questions on that? No? All right, cool, let's go to the next page. If you want to advance into, uh, I, I'm just gonna assume that we got those two rhythms down. I just gave you the two best rhythms in the world. They're nice, they're simple, but they're the most useful. But now I'm gonna talk about how I think you can kind of take your rhythm to the next level and, and be able to flow because, you know, professional players, they're not gonna play the exact same rhythm for an entire song. They will sometimes flow with the rhythm to kind of suit the rhythm of the vocal sometimes, you know? Or they might, the drummer and the rhythm player might kind of lock in and do some like interesting little things together. So you want to have flexibility in your rhythm playing after a while. So the rhythm improv game is a way that you can get good at playing basically any rhythm that exists. And here's how it works. You're gonna use the 16 stroke rhythm that you learned on the previous page. And, and you can write some notes here if you want. Um, what you'll do is you will play that rhythm. When you get done with that rhythm, you're gonna improv a rhythm. You're gonna make it up on the fly and the rhythm has to be 16 hand motions. So you're gonna wonder, okay, how am I gonna count 16 hand motions when it's going so fast? You have to learn to do that, right? Because if you're ever gonna, if you're ever gonna, in a song, veer away and do a little bit of improvised rhythm, you have to know that, you know, where your measures are still. Does that make sense? So what I recommend people do is, and you could even mute your strings, and you can just go, That's, that's the normal rhythm, right? Then your hand does 16 hand motions of improv improvisation. At the end of that 16 hand motion improvisation, you go back to the normal rhythm. 
So I'll show you. I'll, I'll start doing some very simple things. Improv. 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 You see what I'm doing? I'm just trying new rhythms. That, it, it wasn't improv. That's when I went back to the normal. Do you understand what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And you want to eventually, you want to start simple and try to be counting those 16 strokes or at least know when your measure's over and you've got to go back into the normal rhythm. And you start it easy. Sometimes I encourage people to start with just down strokes. Then I encourage them to start adding in some upstrokes. And then, and then you, you gradually get to as complicated of rhythm playing as, as humanly possible. So you start off with See what I'm doing? I'm even putting in some long pauses because when you're playing an actual song, I'm doing the normal rhythm here, right? But I might want to change it up sometimes. Improvise those rhythms had I not, you know, taken the time to just get used to, you know, improvising rhythms and with this imp rhythm improvising, improvising game. Now, if you want to go to the next level, then you can start to introduce palm mutes. <coughs> All right. So <clears throat> while you're doing this imp uh, rhythm improvising game. So let's try with the, with some chords now. So doing this rhythm improv, prov, improvisation game is perhaps the very best way that you could ever get from you know, someone who's a, you know, maybe not a professional rhythm player and take it all the way up to the next level. Okay, so I, I recommend you grab, grab your pen real quick and I'm gonna make a couple of suggestions during this game. <clears throat> I do believe it really matters, and you can even use a metronome, okay? So some of the notes, I would say use a metronome eventually, and set the metronome to where there's a special click at the beginning of each measure. Click, 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 and why do you think that would be useful during an improvisation? What do you think? Include it on each measure. Say what? Just so you know where to start. Right, and you know if you're wrong. You know if during your rhythm, instead of doing 16 hand motions, you did 18 or you did 14, right? It happens all the time. I see people all the time. They're improvising and they feel like they did 16, but they only did 12. And so that means they haven't, they haven't trained their mind to do the counting of these fast hand motions, right? 
So that's why the, the metronome that gives a, gives a special click every four. It's night and day different than if you have a metronome that just gives normal clicks. So you, so you need to make sure you have that. Um, I would recommend starting, if, if this is new to you, when you do your improvisation, I would do all downstrokes. Okay? And just see if you can count, you know, there should be eight downstrokes, right? <coughs> Before you go back into the normal rhythm. Then I would start to introduce some upstrokes. Then I would try leaving some big fat gaps during that rhythm improvisation. I would try, uh, as you're getting better and better, I would try doing a lot of upstrokes, mostly upstrokes, more upstrokes than downstrokes, just so you can get used to that strange syncopation. Um, and then eventually, when you basically feel like you can go pretty fast, improvise any variation of 16 stroke that is under the sun, then I would start to introduce palm mutes. Click, da 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 click, or you know, where you where you get to palm them, um, and then try every variation of palm mutes that you can possibly do. Finally, uh, I would recommend. Uh, well, there's two more things actually. I would recommend as you're doing that rhythm improv improvisation that you try to get some emotion into it. The acoustic guitar is an emotional instrument, and if you're used to playing electric, I think you you said you are right. Most electric players, when they go to acoustic, they, have, they play a soulless acoustic. Because you don't play electric the same way as you do acoustic. Acoustic is very sensitive to the touch. And did you hear when I was playing rhythm? Like you would get some major pops of emotion and you could bring them way down and then rise it up gradually. And it's like a roller coaster. Kind of like if you go to like, um, you know, to see some, a, you know, an orchestra play. Or a symphony, they'll, they'll have just this beautiful dynamics that is really a huge part of the show. And that's what you need to learn to do with your rhythm play. So you can exude dynamics through sometimes hitting, not harder. What is it that makes your, your string sound loud? Is it swinging faster? Is it flexing your arm harder when you hit? What, what is it specifically that makes a string? How much time the pick is on the string? It's not true. It's not true. I can play very, very, very fast, and it can be very soft. It's actually how much, how, like how tight you're holding your pick, and how far you displace the pick, and then it pops past your pick, and then if it's vibrating this far, it's going to be very loud. But if you touch, if your pick is super, if you're holding it very light, and you hit that string, you're only going to displace it a little bit before it pops pa past. Listen, listen to this very carefully. Watch how soft I can make this rhythm play, even though I'm playing fast. Watch. Why is it so soft? I'm playing fast, right? Um, it's because the, the pick is very floppy. I'm letting it, I'm holding it very loosely. And so when it hits us the top string, and I move it down, my pick will flop past that string very easily. But if I hold it really tight, listen to this. I'm not, I'm holding it tight so that when I pull this pick through the string, I, I yank that string down very far until it finally just like slips past. Yeah. And then it's just vibrating super far. Like look at, look at how far you can see the strings. When I do it soft, you can't even see them moving. You see? So when we're playing solid rhythm, you know, like a really good rhythm, you should be alternating between tight, loose, tight, loose, tight, loose. Ready? Just to like, you know, videotape my hand, you see it pinch, loose, pinch, loose, pinch, loose. And you want that type of dynamic in your rhythm playing. 
Okay? Any questions on that? No. Light sand's a little too pretty loose where it's always moving in my hand and almost falling out. Should I get like a thinner pick so I can hold it a little bit tighter? Or is that... um, I think, is it actually, funny? in my opinion, I used this pick for a long time, this exact pick, because uh, this is the Dunlop. <coughs> Uh, Jim Dunlop nylon 0 0.60 millimeter. You guys have seen these around probably? The edge is sharp and I love the sound. I can actually tell a difference between this pick and other picks. Okay, I went to a heavier one, they have a 0 0.70 and I use that a lot because it's, it, I feel like I can play lead a little bit better with it, but it's just not the same when I play rhythm because this is just, it's a little bit floppier so I can get a little more soft playing into, you know? Is that the same as a medium? Yeah, it's a medium. What do you got? Yeah, it's the same, but there's just something about feel the edge. Okay. Yeah, like you see how the edge is actually like okay. it's actually sharpened. Yeah. And these are pretty popular. They're cheap. I mean, they're at every store, and I just really like this sound. Um, so are you, you have a pretty thick pick. It's point seven three. Point seven three. So <laughs> that's gonna sound a little uh, like you're playing with a penny a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not gonna sound bad, but. I feel like if you're if you're playing a set and you're focusing on rhythm playing, you might want something a little bit lighter than that. So um, what, what's the gauge of that? 0. 0.6, 0. 0.60. 0. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then holding your pick, you don't want to ever touch it with more than these two fingers. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Um, Country Roads is a good song that you can use. Um, you can see we can play use the eight stroke rhythm on Country Roads on page four. If you want to try that out, you can try separating the bass note with your eight stroke rhythm. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm teaching lessons, what I'll do is I'll say, play this song, and I'm going to go into the other room, and I want to hear only the bass notes. I don't want to hear anything else. And the point of that is I want to see a separation of dynamics. And uh, it really adds some soul to the, the playing. Okay? Let's go to page five. Um, Page five is, uh, it shows you some pick picking. And so if you want your rhythm playing to go kind of sound more mature, sometimes it sounds nice to do some, some pick picking. And so what you could do, let's just be a little concept that I think might be, might be useful to you. Um, when I play rhythm, Like um, what you could do is at the the last four hand motions of an eight stroke rhythm, whenever you want to, you can go in instead of strumming, you can go into a pick picking pattern, which is just it's very simple, and I like to use this one right here. Watch this, ready? This, 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 this. So D string, B string, G string, E string. Can you try that real quick? The people on the video, if there's anyone watching the video. So G string, or, or D is in dog, B is in boy, G is in goat, E is in Edward. Okay, so, and, and I want you to, because we're supposed to keep our hand flowing, right? What direction do you think you should do that pick picking? Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. One way to practice this would be to do two, two rhythms on one chord and just save the last half of the second rhythm for pick picking. So it would be like this.
practice that a little bit, and I think that sounds nice. Um, I teach intermediate classes. Well, I teach beginner, intermediate, and advanced classes, and a songwriting class. And I will typically teach um, this thing I, I call ditties. It's like... And I, I think if you want your rhythm to be as professional as possible, you do everything that I told you today. The dynamics, separating the bass note, you know, pinching hard, loosening up, throwing in the pick picking, but then also adding in some of those, those ditty, like kind of lead things in between the chords, right? And so when it's all said and done, you know, you can, you can throw in some pretty cool Throw it all together. dynamics, a little bit of that pick picking thing once in a while, whenever you feel like it, and then throwing in some lead stuff, and it's, you're going to sound professional. It makes a big, big difference, those little nuances. <coughs> okay? Uh, I thought I'd throw in a little, uh, fun little bonus here. Um, pentatonic scale on, the, on page six. This is every single note on the pentatonic scale, so if you want to play lead, that's where it's at. That is the, uh, and then a couple of you guys, I know you two were here last week, right? At the lead plan, was that useful? Yeah. That was helpful, cool. Yeah, so um, this is the pentatonic scale, it's every note on the entire guitar neck. Okay, and you said you know the pentatonic scale, right? You know all the five sections, all those sections? Yes. Cool, yeah, that's awesome, man, that you already know that, because um, that's everything when it comes to lead plan. So you will think about it like this. This is all in the key of G. Okay? You'll think about this, see this? This is the first section. You play bum 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 back down. This is the second section right there. I don't know how else to show you, I just kinda like that's the third section, that's the next section, and that's the last section. Okay? And there's five different sections. And those are gonna be the absolutely most useful thing for you ever when it comes to lead playing. So you wanna memorize all five sections. Right, and, and so when you solo in a key, you can improvise a little in one section, so into the next section, into the next section, and the next section, and then into the next section. There's five sections that give you all the notes in the key up and down the entire guitar note. Okay? So anyone want to play some rhythm real quick? Yep. Go ahead. Play some rhythm. In the key, can you do it in the key of G? Like G's? Yeah, go ahead. Key of G. Improvising in the first section, improvising in the second section. So as long as you're hitting notes on that scale, you're going to be in the key of what? G. G. But if you want to be in the key of G sharp, what do you do with those with those five sections? Move it down. You shift it one fret, and you're in the key of G sharp. You shift it again, you're in the key of A, and um, super helpful. Cool. Um, 
So guys, let me um, let me close off. Let's go to the next page real quick. Um, I hope that was helpful to you. Um, I'm the head of the NYC Guitar Group. We have about 5,000 guitarists in the in the network right now, and um, we've got some great stuff going on all the time. We have jams. We, uh, when the weather is better, we're, we're jamming in the park a lot. Um, we do workshops all the time. Uh, I think pretty much every week right now we're doing workshops, so keep, keep your eye open on the, on the meetup. Um, and then if you want any more information on our classes, we have fast track classes that will pull you forward in the guitar faster than you could ever imagine. So we, get, we have people that Probably start off in like high beginner, and by the time we do about three months with them, they're, they're pretty darn good players. Pretty darn good players. I mean, they know their theory backwards and forwards. They can solo up and down in any key, major scale or pentatonic scale. They can look at a chord chart, and they can figure out what key it's in in two seconds. They can transpose, they can use their capo, they can solo up and down the guitar, guitar neck. I mean, they can do all kinds of different things. So I. I you can see that in a short period of time we can get a lot accomplished. And so imagine you know, three months of that. So I encourage people, if you guys want to move forward with your guitar playing, get involved in one of these classes. They are killer. And they, they usually are group classes too. So you get to meet a whole bunch of different people. Um, okay, cool. We'll just pass this around. If anyone wants to sign up with their information, you can at least, we can get in touch with you and, and leave the contact information. We'll get in touch. Take care, Ty. So, um, yeah, um, let me just say real quick uh, a couple of the classes. We have an advanced performance master class coming up. Uh, we're going to talk about just everything that it takes to you know, be in a successful band. Because, I mean, through my 20s, I, tra I toured in a band and fronted a band and wrote songs, produced albums, I mean, all that stuff. We have a songwriter's master class, which we're going to, by the end of that class, we're going to try to have each person with it writ uh, written an album or an EP at least. Um, so that'll be cool. And then we have an intermediate class. To me, I think if you want to move forward on the guitar, there's no doubt that intermediate class is the very best. We have st uh, our students by the end of this class, uh, a lot of them can say um, they memorize the chords in all seven keys and they can say them like ultra fast. So you give them a chord chart. If you gave them a chord chart in the key of B and said play it in the key of D, they would just play it in the key of D. I mean, that's how fast we, we have some exercises that get the, you know, the theory stuff down really well. Um, we're trying to get them to be professional players. Um, and then uh, I also do private lessons, and then we have YouTube classes as well. People who are in the classes, uh, uh, maybe about half of them don't actually come to class. We actually videotape all the classes and then send out the, the documents. So if you don't like getting up on Saturday mornings or leaving your house, we do it that way as well. So... Yeah, I just encourage you guys, if you're interested, I'd love to, you know, to teach you. It's something I'm really passionate about, love to teach, and um, love to help in any way possible. So, cool guys, great to meet you. Great to see you guys again. And, um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Yeah? Doctor recently, and she was um, in the top percentile for height. 